is Buffy Fest at San Diego Comic Con with Christos Gage of Buffy and Nicholas Brendan of Buffy, as you all well know. How are you guys? Great. Oh, great. Excellent. I got two turntables and a microphone. <laughs> These are cute. Thanks. I mean, really. Yes. Are you a cut guy? Um, I, <laughs> I mean, those are nice feet. I'm just kidding. I hate, I, like, I, I hate big fat toes, and I hate when this toe is longer. Than yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah, I don't have that. Uh, and those are just really cute shoes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of chatter on the web that this is shaping up to be the best season of Buffy comics ever. How does that make you guys feel? Uh, it makes me feel like I need to really surpass the, the show, too. No, I mean, it may, oh, it, I, I'm, I'm kidding. I, it's ridiculous to even say that because, uh, you know, Joss was writing season eight and uh, wrote the first episode of season nine. So just to even be for me in that company, because I never actually had the privilege of working with yeah. Joss on a show, I just, I'm just i just glad I'm not letting everybody down. How does it make you feel, sir? I really enjoy your feet. I do, actually. Well, thank yeah, you. I'm not, I'm not a feet guy, but no, you have very nice feet. Well, thank you very when much. When did you get those things done? My that's pedicure? a that's a fresh pedicure. You mean my pedi? Yeah, and yeah. my mani. Yeah. That's adorable. Yeah, thank you. It's really wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, what was the question? <laughs> she was asking about feet. Best Buffy about ever. Feet. How do you feel? <laughs> oh, uh, what for comics? Absolutely. Yeah. It's because we talked about this. It's come down to the relationships again. It's come down to the relationships. Yeah. Very wise. Yeah. No, that's what we we're trying to do. And Josh himself said in the summit, you know. Uh, in season eight, it was their first time doing it in the comics, and he got really big and cosmic because he was enjoying the freedom of the comic book format, not worrying about the budget. And he he has said repeatedly that he felt like, in in a way, they got away from what really made the show work, which was the characters. So since then, it's been about trying to bring it back to what means the most to everyone. So I mean, for me, it's just a matter of not screwing it up because what we did in the summit was so. Uh, you know, I was so excited after we left. The, were you excited after the summit? Oh my god! It yeah. was the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Just seeing that idea. Remember, I said that. that, that yeah. I'm like, and I, I called it out too. I'm like, yeah. yeah no. Are you? It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's just this idea it formed in the middle of the circle, like a it covenant. Like a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. The idea of the the book, uh, the vampire being book, rewritten, yeah. being rewritten and being able to put the new rules of magic in it and have them become part of reality. And you, you're right, because I remember we went to get coffee at Starbucks and you were like. That just came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all of a sudden we were talking about and, it. And, and, and how many ways you can go, yeah. ergo, with Dracula fucking it up, and then it has to be right, you know? But people are going to try and, 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 you know, hydrate some soon. Yeah. It was fabulous. Now, Christo, I remember you told us a few years back here in San Diego, uh, when you first started Angel Fate, that you watched the entire series, like, you in, in quick succession to brush up. What did you do for Buffy? Did you watch the whole series again? No, I had actually, I actually, for Angel and Faith, I watched the first three seasons of Buffy, all of Angel, and then the rest of Buffy. Yeah. So I had seen, I had seen everything. Uh, so it was all still pretty fresh. The one thing is tricky for me is when people say season six, season five, whatever, because to me there were no seasons. It's just all one long, long, right. long binge. So. Yeah. so what did you guys set out to do with this arc, with this season? The pancakes on your head. Yes. <laughs> adorable. Did you notice that? I did not. It's crazy. You, you, you the butter looks real, right? You don't, you, hells yeah, it does. You've done good. Thanks. Is it real butter? No, but it looks really real. It's good stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is there a particular mission or feeling you're going for this season? Uh, it's, it's more the, the characters, right? I mean, it's... I, okay. One thing that the, the Buffy has always done brilliantly is reflect a life stage that we all go through in the context of crazy supernatural happenings. And we're trying to do that now, now that the characters are out of school, are entering out of... Dawn's still in college, but the others are out of college, entering into adulthood, and it's when you try to figure out who you're going to be going forward, like for the rest of your life, and it's a pretty big responsibility. So you see that paralleled in the idea of writing the new rules of magic. Like, these are going to be the rules going forward. It's a huge responsibility. Ever and for, ever. Yeah. So that and just bringing it back to the characters, right? Yeah. And, and also the book's writing itself, too. Like, we, you know, that's the one oh, I the book. Oh, the vampire book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because you we can't just We have to get say, it right. Right. You, yeah. can't just, you can't just say, I don't want that responsibility, because if right. you don't, then someone evil is going to do it. And, but we've discovered that when they do it, it goes completely awry. Yes, which is like life. Yep. Like life. So uh, will there be, in the next arc, Will there be more focus on Buffy as protagonist, or are you going to still
still do the sort of multi-character threads or any one shots coming up? Uh, in six, there will be focus on Buffy. In seven, it's a very Xander Spike centered one. And then eight and nine is very Buffy. And ten is a little bit more Harmony Spike Xander. And oh, then, Harmony Spike Yeah. Xander. And then eleven is very Buffy oriented anyway. What do you have? Twelve Xander, thirteen <laughs> Xander, fourteen Xander. I started talking like this after I did the African Queen. Okay. Um, are there any one shots coming up, or is that more of a Star Alley question? Uh, you mean set, like separately from the main series? Yeah. Are we branching off? I don't think we're doing one shots or mini series this time around, but other than the uh, the James Marsters graphic novel, but we haven't ruled it out. Like you know, if Jane Espenson says, you know what, I've got some time off. Once upon a time, and, and would yeah. love to do something. Of course, you know she, we're going to do it because she's awesome. So. Now, this maybe you can answer a bit better. Can we expect anyone else crossing over from Angel and Faith? There will be crossovers, and that's as far as I I can go at this time. Um, Nicholas Brendan. Yeah. It's been a, a few years since you've embodied Xander. What was your favorite part? What was your favorite part about contributing to Buffy in this way? Solid feet, really. It's really good feet. Okay, I didn't know that I was a foot guy until you said that. Yeah, the favorite, a, my a favorite fetish. part, uh, I think, um, you know, I, it would, t I just, the sense of humor, really, the jokes, the quibs, the sardonic nature of them. I just, it, it was just a, perfect meld of me playing him and and him playing me it was just kind of it's one of those like magical things and the thing that sucks is the first thing i ever did and i'm looking for that again and it i mean if i find it i'll be so stoked but it's kind of it's hard to kind of like to it just doesn't juxtapose really it's it can, it can, it can, it can but i mean it was really one of i think maybe outside of author fonzarelli xander's the coolest character ever on television Outside of season seven. That segues into this really well. You can really hear Xander's voice in this arc. I mean, the issues you're contributing to, the funny, the pervy, the insecure, the strength, all of that about Xander. Um, and there's a couple of self-deprecating jokes in there about how hard writing is. Mm -hmm. How much of Xander is Nicholas Brendan, and how much of Nicholas Brendan is Xander? I mean, I think all. I mean, really. I mean, you can answer that question too. I, I can. The, probably the the one area where I have to step in is the real. Xander's a real nerd, and and he knows all about Star Wars and comic books and everything like that. Somebody here did not prepare for his role. He he grew up playing baseball and doing athletic things, so I had to do that. So that's why I you know yeah. things that it, when it comes to discussing things like maquettes, which was a big thing. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Xander has my cats. So I think I'm hearing so that everything is Xander except Nicholas Brendan is cooler? Is that what I'm getting? No, no, because <laughs> okay. being a nerd is cooler than not being a nerd. Because right now oh. I've got I've got nothing to look forward to. Like, but the nerds have do? Have you seen the Dodgers play? <laughs> They're horrible. I cannot say that I have. No, I, don't know I mean, but you are wearing a pink, I guess. I am. Like you can't go by it. This is kind of a heavy question. In light of that, uh, the very Xander-focused arc, it shows him going from a real rage in Season 9, at the end of Season 9 especially, to feeling completely powerless this season. Uh, was it difficult to write such a light-hearted character in so much pain? That's you. Yeah, because yeah, I didn't have anything to do that. Once you get to be our age, you're pretty much in pain all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, you know, the, the interesting thing is, Xander was really angry in the previous season, nine, and this one, yeah. he's he's going to, I don't know if we've gotten there in the comic yet, but he's going to therapy, He's you know, and he's trying to be more back to his old self, but he does feel helpless, he's struggling, but we also didn't want him to just be, we went through an entire season of him having the PTSD and, you know, being angry, we didn't want to do that again, uh, so... I think what you're seeing in Xander is something that a lot of us feel at that time in our lives where you 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 do feel a degree of helplessness. It's like, okay, I'm out in the world, I'm master of my own destiny in a way, but I'm really not because I can't control the things that I need to. And so I, I think once again, like in all the in all the best, hopefully as with all the best uh, 
Buffy storylines, there's a, a universality to it that we can all agree with, even though we may not all be uh, manservants to the, the, the uh, Dark Prince. Vader. <laughs> Uh, will we be seeing you again in the Dark Horse Universe? Yes. Yes. Issue 7, 11, and 12, and whichever other ones we feel like doing. Yeah, we, we, we like each other a little bit. Yeah, we, like, we, we, we have fun. And he's busy doing a secret project, so I don't have Vita on the fan for me anymore, but still. You are? We can't talk about it. Can't talk, can't talk about it, but he, he's... He's lying. I showed up to a comic book resources interview that he didn't know about. He oh my God! What happened? San Jose. That's so crazy. Uh, yeah, it, it was fine. It was totally fine. I took care I of everything. I think that was probably like the only overlap thing from Jackie that, that didn't. Right. Wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was. I wasn't even. I wasn't even in, in, the, in the city. Yeah. I taken. I taken a jet plane. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you guys and Rebecca be a little bit of a dynamic trio for a while. Yes, and uh, Dan Jackson, our ace colorist, Jimmy Betancourt, our letterer. Uh, it's a great team all around, uh, editorial on Fabulous. top of everything. Looking yeah. Fabulous. Everybody loves it. Congratulations. Steve Morris. I keep forgetting Steve Morris, who is an amazing, amazing cover artist, uh, painter. painter. I would be so bad accepting an award. I really would. Really? Would... Accept an award for us right now. And the winner is Nicholas Brenton. Oh my God, thank you so much. I, um, okay, this is what I'm going to say. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say... I'm going to thank people only because people expect me to say that. So I don't want to thank anybody. Not that I'm not thankful, but I'm going to leave somebody out. I want to thank my peers who, who really elevated my game to where, I mean, clearly I was a notch above because I won the award. Yeah. But if it wasn't for you guys, you little bastards, I, I wouldn't be holding the statue right now. And I just want to thank you guys, you poor, pathetic people. Um, I will thank my mom for giving me her ticket so I can bring Donna. Who's Donna? Just some chick I'm dating. <laughs> um, and anyway, so, uh, yeah, I think I need to take a piss, but you guys, <laughs> you guys are really kind of, you guys are really, you guys are really kind of useless. <laughs> um, but so am I. Anyway, uh, thank you and not thank you. So essentially that's how it'll be, which is a problem. That is a problem. That's a problem. The fact that you recognize it is the first step. You have to say, hey, I... I mean, you were great. You, the, the editor, I mean, it was kind of like, I would not be good. I would be so... I would freak. I would, I would cry. I would probably cry. That's important. People love that shit. The vulnerability. Yeah, I would cry. Did you want an acceptable word? Are you a little jealous? No, I, that I, moment? Okay. I, I'm... I'm not the least bit jealous. Uh, yeah. I, I no, I, I don't want to accept an award. Even an Eisner award? No, uh, now that Will like Eisner, that. it's it's the comic book industry Oscar they're doing in uh, well, tomorrow night or tonight. I can't wait to. Uh, are we nominated? No, we're not nominated. We, we we never will be. No, I I remember my very first Comic Con I went to it and Will Eisner himself was still alive and he gave them out and I was like this is so cool. I hope someday. I can win one, and Will Eisner will give it to me, and he has passed away, sadly, so there's no point in winning one now. I don't even want one. Yeah. Yeah. So, do, so not, not, a note to the Eisner nominating committee, that does not mean that I don't want to be nominated for an Eisner award, mostly because the, the brilliant work of Nick Brennan needs to be recognized. I didn't even know what it was. That's, that's, uh, that's kind of... We have, we, we've just torpedoed our chances. I, 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 yeah. I'm Listen, if, if I'm not learning something new every day... I'm not learning something new. <laughs> All, right. All right. Sorry about that. If no. we were too off the cuff, it was our last interview. We got a little silly. I yeah. cannot blame you. I love it. We're using it all. <laughs> nice care. to see you again. Thank you, you so much. You as well. Thank you, Crystal. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep.